Are you interested in creating your own version of Trello, a Kanban board style work management tool? If so, one of the things you'll need to create is a database. And in this video, we'll design a database based on Trello's features that you could use as inspiration for creating your own tool or learning how databases are designed. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Database Star YouTube channel, the place for developers looking to improve their database and SQL skills. The process we'll use for this video is similar to the other database design videos on my channel. We'll have a list of requirements that we want to meet or features we want to include in our database, which are based on Trello. We'll then see how we could create or update our database design to allow for those features. We'll repeat these steps for each of our features and get to the final design. You can skip ahead to the final design using the timestamp in the description if you just want to see the end result, but if you want to see how we get there and improve your skills, keep watching. Our first requirement is that a user should be able to sign up to our application and create an account. In Trello, it's done on the sign up button and process here. It's a pretty common requirement on websites and applications that you want people to use. Let's see how we can do this in our database design. Like all of my other database design videos, I'll use a tool called Lucidchart for the diagrams. You can use any other tool you like, such as the modelling functionality of your SQL editor or pen and paper. We'll start with a blank diagram here. To allow a user to sign up for our application, we'll need a table to store these users. So I'll add a table to the diagram. I'll call this table site user. We may think we want to call it user, but in many databases, the word user is a reserved word as it's used internally by the database. So to avoid any potential issues, we'll call it something else, such as site user. What do we want to store in this table? First, we'll need some kind of identifier or primary key. I'll add one called ID. Then for simple login functionality, we would need an email address and a password. We could add a username if we want to use that as a login field instead of email, but for now we'll just use the email address. Finally, we'll add a sign up date field to capture the date that a user has signed up. This may be useful for us to see our user growth over time. Here's what our table looks like, which meets our first requirement. Our second requirement is that a user can create one or more boards to work with. A board can be either public or private. Public means that anyone with the link can view and edit it, and private means that only the user who created it can view it and edit it. We also want to know when a board was created. In Trello, here's what it looks like. You can click here within Trello to create a new board. Let's update our diagram. We'll add a new table and call it board. In this table, we'll add an ID field. We'll add a name for the board so our users can call it whatever they like. We'll add a create a date field so we know when it was created. We'll also add a user ID field and link it to the site user table. The relationship is one user to many boards, so the arrow goes from the primary key in the site user table to the user ID foreign key in the board table. How do we capture whether a board is public or not? One way to do it is a status column, which could have a value of either public or private. However, there is a better way, I think. We only have two possible values, public or private. So we could use a concept of a Boolean. We could add a field called isPublic, which would store a value of true if it's public or false if it's private. This would make the design a bit simpler. But you can do it another way if you like. So that's how we can add boards and meet requirement number two. Our third requirement is that a board can have multiple columns, which are called lists. There is a to-do column by default, but it can be renamed or deleted. More columns or lists can be added, and these columns can be moved around the board to be in a different order. Here is what it looks like in Trello. We can create a list like this and give it a name. We can drag it around the screen to change its order. Here is how we can update the design to meet this requirement. We'll create a new table and we'll call it list. It has an ID like our other tables. A list relates to a board, so we'll add a board ID so we know what board it belongs to. We'll also add a column for the name of the list and the position which could be a numeric field to identify where on the board it would be shown. That's all we need to do to meet requirement number three. 
Our fourth requirement is about cards. A user can add cards to a list on the board. Cards can be moved to different lists or columns, and a card can have a name and a description. Here's what this looks like in Trello. We can add a card like this. We can give it a name and a description. We can also move it to another list. We can update our diagram to add a new table called card. In this table, we'll add our ID primary key column. A card belongs to a list, which belongs to a board, so we'll add a list ID as a foreign key. The card can, of course, be moved between lists, but it only belongs to one list at a time. We'll add new columns for the name and description and a created date to indicate when it was created. Now, requirement number four is met. Requirement number five says that comments can be added to cards by different users who have access to the board. Now, we haven't defined users having access to a board yet, so we'll need to include this in our design. Here is how we add a comment in Trello on a card. We open a card, add a comment, and see it here on the card. There are two things we need to add here. We need to give users the ability to access a board. Based on what we know about Trello and how we think our own application could work, let's say a board can have multiple users with access. Also, a user can have access to multiple boards. This means there is a many-to-many -many relationship between site user and board. To solve this, we'll need to add a joining table. We'll call our table board member. We'll add in the IDs of each of these tables and link them as foreign keys. So we've now got the ability to add users to a board. This would only apply to private boards because public boards are accessible by anyone and the user does not need to be added to the board. Let's add the feature to comment on a card. We'll add a new table called comment. We'll add a primary key field of ID and a card ID to link it to the card. We'll add a field called comment to store the text of the comment. We'll also add a created date to store when the comment was added. Finally, we'll add in a user ID to store the user who created the comment. With both of these tables, we have now met requirement number five. The next requirement is the ability to add checklist items to a card, which is a list of things that can be checked off. In Trello, we can add a checklist to a card like this. We can add multiple items to the card and check them off. In our diagram, we can achieve this by adding a new table. We'll call ours checklist item. Within this table, we have an ID field and a card ID field so we know what card the checklist item is related to. We'll add a name column, which is the name of the item that we enter onto the card. We'll have another column called is checked, which will store the fact that the item has been checked or not. It could store true or one for checked and false or zero for not checked. Finally, we'll add a column for the position, which indicates the order that the checklist item is in. This means we can save the order of the checklist and display it in the same order when the card is opened. Requirement number six is now met. We have 12 requirements to meet in this design. Requirement number seven is for users to be added as members on a specific card. This means the user will then see updates made to the card. It's like a watch feature. A user can add themselves to a card or a user can add another user. Here's how you can add members to a card in Trello. You can open a card and click on this button here to watch a card. You can also use this area on the card to add another user. How do we capture this in our design? First, we need to understand the relationship between cards and users. A user can be a member of or watch many cards. A card can also have many users as members. So this is another many-to-many -many relationship. To solve this, we'll add a table in the middle of site user and card and call it card member. We'll add the ID columns from both tables as foreign keys and link the tables. Now you might be thinking, do we want to link this card to board member record to ensure that only members of the board can be added as members of the card? Or do we relate it to the site user table? Well, given that users can add themselves as a member and there is a concept of a public board that doesn't use the board members table, we should link it to the site user table. We don't just want to limit it to the board members because then users won't be able to add themselves to a card on public boards. We may want to add validation in the app to ensure that private boards only allow board members to be added to help with this. For now, requirement number seven is met. 
Requirement number eight is about keeping track of activity made on a card, such as when it was created and when fields were populated or changed on a card. In Trello, we can see this on a card by looking at the bottom section of a card. We can see a history of changes made to the card. For our design, we can add a new table. We want this table to store the activity history of a card, so we'll call it card activity. In this table, we'll have our ID column. We'll have a card ID to indicate which card it relates to. We'll also have a user ID so we can capture which user made the change to the card. We can add an activity column to store the description of the change, such as updated the description or added a title. Finally, we'll add a created date to capture when the activity happened. It would be the application that would populate this table at the point that certain activities occur in the application. We can say that requirement 8 is met. The next requirement is the ability to archive a card, so that it's still stored on the board but it no longer shows on the board. Here's how we can do that in Trello. We can open a card and click on the archive button to archive it. It will then no longer appear on the board. We could add a status column to the card with a lookup table that has the applicable values of active or archived. Because we only have two possible values, like our public and private boards, we could have an is active field. We could then store true for active and false for archived. Just like the other places we've used this concept in our database, it's not the only solution, but it would work. Requirement number nine is met. The next requirement is the ability to add labels to a card. We also need to edit label names for our cards, change the colors of the labels, and create new labels. Our changes for labels would apply to a specific board. Here is how you can work with labels in Trello. When you open a card, you can add labels to it here. You can change the name of a label, change its color, and even add new labels. These changes only apply to your board, and when you create a new board, you'll see the default set of labels. For our design, we'll need to capture two concepts. We'll need our master list of labels, which are the labels used by default for all new boards. We also need the record of labels for each board. There are a couple of ways to do this, and I'll show you one. First, we'll add the master list of labels. We'll call this table core label. Within the table, we have an ID, a name of the label, and a color, which could be a hexadecimal code. We don't relate this table to anything, as it's not referred to by anything, and that's okay. Next, we'll add a table for the board-specific labels. We'll add a new table and call it board labels. This will have an ID column and a board ID column, so we know what board it relates to. We'll have the name of the label and the color. When a new board is created, the application could copy the records from the core label table into this table for the new board. With this table, the users can edit the names of the labels, the colors, and add new labels, and it would only apply to their board and not the entire system. Finally, we'll need to capture the ability to add labels to cards. A card can have many labels, and a label can have many cards, so we'll add a many-to-many -many table in the middle of board labels and card, and call it card labels. We'll add the primary keys of both tables and relate them back to the tables. We've now met requirement number 10. Only two more to go. Requirement number 11 is about having a due date and a reminder date time for a card. This is how it's done in Trello. We can add a due date to a card like this to indicate when it's due. We can also add reminders to a card when we choose a date and time and we'll see a pop-up or something on the screen when that time arrives. How can we add this to our design? For the due date, we can add this as a field to the card table. We'll call this new field due date. For the reminder date time, we'll add a new column to the card table as well. We'll call this reminder date. When we create this database and this table, we may have two different data types for these columns. The due date may be a date type as we don't care about the time. The reminder may be a date time because we want to store both the date and the time. However, requirement 11 is now met. The final requirement, number 12, is the ability to attach files and pictures to a card. In Trello, you can do this by clicking on this button here. You can then browse to a file on your computer and it will be attached to the card. In our design, we'll add a new table called card attachment. We'll add an ID column 
as well as a card ID column so we can relate the attachment to a card. We'll add an uploaded date column so we can record when the file was uploaded. We'll also add a file name so we can display the file on the card. Finally, we'll add a location field so we know where the file is stored. This could refer to a path to a directory on a server where the file is stored or storing the file in the database, depending on how you want to implement the solution. That means we have met requirement 12, which is all of our requirements. Here is a view of our final design. We've got our site user table that has relationships to several other tables. We've got the concept of a board that has some related tables. We've got lists within boards and cards within lists. We've got many other features such as attachments, labels, comments and checklists. There are a few other Trello features or features of other Kanban board style apps that we've left off. There are some automation features within Trello we didn't design for. Trello has many power-ups or extensions that we did not include in our design. We also didn't include any administration or workspace settings. So if you want to practice your skills in database design, consider looking at Trello or other apps and working out what features are needed and how you may want to enhance this design to include them. If you want to learn more about database design and SQL, visit my website at databasestar.com. If you like this video, consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.